The year is 1993, and all of a sudden, one day, black metal becomes world famous. What happened? Let's find out. During the year 1992, Euronymous was running his shop into the ditch. He was supposed to have a record company and a shop and run it, but he was a terrible businessman. And when he released uh, my debut album, the Burtzum uh, debut album, the Burtzum debut album, he, um, he had to ask me for the money to afford it. And uh, when he sold out all, his, uh, all the copies, and he did quite fast, I think it was printed in a thousand, maybe 500 even. 500 CDs and 500 uh, LPs. Anyway, he, when he had sold everything out, he didn't have <clears throat> the money to print more. So months went by and uh, as a musician, to me that was rather frustrating. So I um, visited, his, visited his shop quite often to, you know, try to help him run his business. I mean, he was so incompetent, he didn't even manage to go to the post office and collect, you know, uh, packages with albums he was, that he was supposed to sell in his shop because, you know, he didn't have a car. And the gods forbid, you know, taking the bus or walking would be too hard, I guess. So I visited him and I drove him to the post office. I tried everything I could to help him. And uh, eventually I kind of gave up. So I wanted to start my own record company and just release my music myself. He didn't like it very much. And in one, con uh, one, uh, one um, what's that called in English? Conversation, in one conversation I had with him on the phone, he told me that he wanted me to do something to uh, you know, help his business. And I told him that I could uh, arrange an interview with some guys I knew, and he didn't want to do it himself, but he uh, was very eager to have me do it. And I thought, well, okay, I'll just do it anonymous and talk about his shop, and uh, and uh, it would help his business because he didn't, ha he didn't have enough customers. So I did. Talked with a Christian journalist in. Uh, Bergenstiden, a newspaper in Norway. And the guy was a complete nutcase. I didn't know at the time, of course. He was a Christian. And uh, uh, his intent was, of course, to prove uh, the existence of satanists, say, satanists in uh, Norway. And I was, uh, I was uh, at the time, I think I was 19 years old, and I had this. Uh, fuck you attitude so I didn't give a shit and uh, I just uh, exaggerated and had fun with him really and uh, connected it all of course to um, black metal and his shop in Oslo Helvete. and uh, the journalist left he wanted to check my uh, claims with the police and so forth because all of this was linked to um, uh, church burnings and everything and uh, of course, uh, my idea was that if uh, the cops came and wanted to ask me about the church burnings, all I could do was to say that, hey, I talked to the journalist to mock him. I pulled his leg. Uh, I haven't done anything. Nobody I know have done anything. Bye bye. And that would be it. Which, of course, is true. Had people in the scene had a brain, but of course they didn't. But anyway, he called the police and uh, he was supposed to call me and run the story th through the phone, uh, tell me the story through the phone and I would be able to confirm it or not. And he, he called me and I said, well, that's not what I told you. He was completely out of his mind. and. Um, that's not the story, you know, that's bullshit. You didn't even mention the, um, uh, the shop in Oslo. That was the whole point after all. 
And he said, OK, I'll change the story and I'll call you later. And then 10 minutes later, the cops came at my door. He had called the cops. And they arrested me uh, instead of ask, questioning me, like, uh, do you know anything about this? And I would say, no. They arrested me. OK. Uh, and then he ran his story. Not the story, the real story, but the story he had produced based on what he, I had talked to him about. And then the cops asked me, did you uh, give an interview to this or that guy yesterday? And I said, yes. And then the newspaper wrote that I had confirmed the story. Not that I had confirmed that I had talked to him, but I had confirmed his story. And then the police sent me to, to um, jail, custody, where they were not, I was not allowed to talk to anybody. So the journalist, for three weeks, three whole weeks, he was allowed to push his agenda without anyone questioning it, because nobody were able to. The only person able to was me, and I was in prison, not allowed to talk. So the whole story was just complete bullshit. And, uh, but the good thing is, of course, that eventually, uh, the, the story about uh, also, uh, the Euronymous shop came up. And then, <sighs> amazingly, which is so incredibly idiotic, he closed his shop because the attention was too uncomfortable for his family. <sighs> and uh, so I, s I sat weeks in prison for nothing. Uh, he closed his shop rather than use this opportunity, which was the whole purpose to begin with. And he was in on it. He had uh, uh, asked me to do it. He closed his shop because his parents thought it was too uncomfortable for his family. You know, the attention wasn't comfortable. And um, during my incarceration, they took all my clothes, of course, and uh, I was supposed to go to court and argue to get out. And the police, this is, I talk about this because I always have this uh, uh, comments from people who, who say that, yeah, you wore a Venom t shirts you were a Venom, Venom fan. I never was. The fact is that I sold Venom t shirts in Bergen to, you know, to make a living. And uh, I had a whole box of Venom shirts and some other shirts for that sake. And the police went to my apartment to get some clothes for me because they had taken everything I had. And of these clothes, of the clothes they took and brought to me were some of these Venom shirts. There were some other idiotic death metal bands. But um, the Venom shirt had black metal on it and it was um, the image on Orsat's shop. You know, the front door had this very image. So, of course, I thought, yes, I'm going to wear that t-shirt, you know, to promote the shop. Because at the time, I didn't know that he had wimped out completely, pussied out like complete chicken and closed his shop. So I didn't know that at, at the time. So I took this t-shirt on, not because I liked Venom. I hated Venom. I never liked Venom. I still think it sucks. But because it had black metal on it and it because it was the image that Orsat had on his uh, front door in the shop. In court, I uh, explained uh, to the judge what had happened, uh, that I had just uh, pulled the journalist's leg and that uh, there was no problem really. I had nothing to do with any of these uh, uh, church fires. And uh, of course he had a brain, he reasoned, so he thought, uh, said that, okay, uh, that makes sense, bye bye, you can go. And that was it. And the whole case just crumbled, bam. There was no evidence. It was just bullshit. Uh, of course, the, the guys in the scene who had burned churches, including Euronymous, um, they were really scared, but of course for no reason. Why would they be scared? If you burn a church, how are they going to prove it? So they were, um, some of them were questioned by the police, but of course, of course, nothing happened. Nobody were persecuted, nothing. Everybody could just go home. No, they weren't, no, nobody were even arrested except me. So that was it. Nothing happened. This was not the reason why anybody were arrested. And uh, 
Euronymous lost so much face because he's supposed to be this cool, hard, black muddler. And he crumbled to pressure from his parents and closed his shop when this happened. Everybody in the scene were just laughing at him because, you know, what a fucking loser. And um, this is one of the reasons why Euronymous started to really, really hate me. The first reason was that I started my own record company. The second reason is that everybody started to laugh at him because of this case, and rightfully so. The third reason was that in the aftermath of this, when I was released from prison, everybody wanted to talk to me and not to him. And previously, he had been this big, important figure in the black metal scene. But now, all of a sudden, they called him to talk to me. They wanted to talk to me. Uh, to me, this was... I didn't really... I wasn't interested in, um, in uh, attention. The whole interview was made anonymous. And uh, when they uh, exposed me with my real name, I thought that this was uncomfortable. I didn't like it. But he wanted to be this black metal, uh, famous black metal person. So when they wanted to talk to me instead of him, it was a... Uh, he was very jealous. And uh, this was the third reason that he started to really, really hate me. The fourth reason is, of course, political differences. But that's really not that important in this context. The real reasons were I started a company of my own because he was useless. And uh, I exposed him as a complete pussy by giving that interview. Or rather, he exposed himself. Uh, or my actions led to him exposing himself. And thirdly, the journalists wanted to talk to me, not him. He was an attention whore. He wanted all the attention. And he didn't get it. I did. So, so all in all, this was um, the incident, the one single incident that made black metal world famous. Kind of strange, isn't it? I have much more to say about this, but I'll do that in my next video. Bye-bye.